I'm not ashamed to own my Lord, nor to defend His cause. Maintain the honors of His word, the glory of His cross. Hello, I'm James Brown, and on behalf of the East End Church of Christ located in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to welcome you to today's edition of Walking Through the Bible a podcast where we seek to study the Bible and the Bible alone. Please stick around afterwards for information on how you can contact us. But for now, please go to the book of Matthew and we'll turn you over to Jeremy Dieselkamp for our study of the day. Thank you, James, and welcome to all of our viewers. This is the 25th lesson in our study of Matthew. On Saturday, we studied Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 to 48, discussing how Jesus told his followers not to retaliate and to love their enemies. If you missed that episode, you can find it and all of our other podcasts on multiple platforms by going to one of the different sites listed on the bottom of the screen. Today we're going to begin with Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, and read through verse 4. The text that you'll see on the screen is from the New King James Version, but you're welcome to follow along with any version that you have. So let's now read Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly." The book of Matthew was not written in chapters and verses. Those things were put in by man in order to make it easier for us to find different passages. However, when we do this, we sometimes miss the overall context. If we read Matthew 6 by itself, we might not realize that this chapter actually is connected to the sayings in chapter 5. If you recall from Lesson 20, Jesus told his disciples that in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, that their righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Even though the chapter has changed, this theme is still carrying through. Jesus was teaching them how to be righteous the way God wanted them to be righteous. His topic now turned to charity. Note here in this passage that Jesus didn't command his disciples to give to the poor. It is assumed that they would. Throughout the teachings of Jesus and even here in this sermon, the idea that his followers were to love everyone is stressed. Part of loving your neighbor is to be charitable towards them when it is necessary and you are able. Since Jesus' disciples are expected to be charitable, Jesus teaches them here the proper manner to do so. The hypocrites, which are the scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees, do their charitable deeds in order to be seen of men. In other words, they aren't charitable because it's the right thing to do or out of concern for the poor. They give so that other people would see and think of them as good religious people. That is not how Jesus' disciples are to give. They aren't to go around and let other people know that they are giving. They aren't to give in order to receive the praise of men. They are to give out of the goodness of their heart and because they have a genuine love for the poor. Jesus told them to give in secret and the Father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. So when we give, how much we give, and to whom we give is to be between us and God. Nobody else should be judging our charity because our charity is not being broadcast to others. When we give with the proper heart and for the right reasons, the Father will reward us openly. Some people use this verse to teach that the more you give, the more God will physically bless you. That is not what this verse teaches. In fact, saying that it does goes against the spirit of what Jesus is actually teaching. The whole purpose of this section of the sermon is to get his disciples to give with the proper mindset which is to help their neighbor. If the only reason people give to the poor is so that God will bless them with more material goods, then what real improvement is that over the way that the hypocrites gave? So if Jesus isn't saying that the more you give, the more God will bless you with, what is he saying about the Father rewarding you? Well, this reward can be viewed in two different ways. One is physical and one is spiritual. Even though God has not promised to bless us with more things the more we give, that doesn't mean that he won't bless us and take care of us at all. Sometimes people don't give to the poor because they believe they can't afford it, so they hold on to their money. Christians need to remember, though, that God is the one who provides our daily bread and our needs. 
Jesus will teach this lesson in this chapter. So Christians are not to worry that God will not provide for them if they give to the poor, for God will still meet their needs. However, let's not view this reward as merely physical. There is a spiritual aspect too. Part of being a follower of God is to show love for our brethren, as 1 John 3 verse 10 says. We cannot be called a child of God if we don't love and care for our brethren. And what will happen to those who aren't children of God? They will be cast to hell. So Jesus is not only teaching a physical lesson about charity here, he is teaching a spiritual lesson of how God expects Christians to behave as well. With that, our time is up for today. Please join us, the Lord willing, tomorrow when we will continue our study of Matthew, beginning with Matthew 6, verse 5. Thank you, Jeremy. And to our viewers, we also thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Should you have a question or comment, please leave it below or email it to answeringtheword at gmail.com. We'll try to respond to you as quickly as we can. We hope you'll join us, Lord's willing, tomorrow when we will be continuing on our study in the book of Matthew. Goodbye for now and have a great day. I'm not ashamed to own my Lord, nor